This video was created by Vinylic Puma of Vinylic Puma Gaming. Hey guys, I'm going to have a Q&A next video. Please be sure to leave a question if you want to participate. What's up guys, this is Vinyl like Puma, and today I'm back with another Borderlands video. Uh, now, I've been planning on doing this video for a little while now, and you guys have been asking me for like months, like up, up to a year, uh, to cover some guns and weapons from Borderlands 1. Well today, after taking a lot longer than I initially wanted to, I am going to be covering some guns and weapons from the Atlas Corporation. Now this video is going to be a little bit of an experiment for me, as I don't really know how well this video will do. Uh, I do ask if you guys like this video, uh, please leave a like on the video, as I think I'll be using that as a determining factor as to whether I should make more Borderlands 1 videos or not. Some stingy salesman once said that if you buy an Atlas, you too will know what it is like to hold the power of the gods in your hands. Atlas weapons tend to be very high quality, and they are often characterized by their high damage per second potential. Atlas weapons also tend to be some of the rarer weapons in the game, and as a weapons manufacturer, they generally tend to stick with making combat rifles, revolvers, repeater pistols, sniper rifles, and shotguns. Though they do also make shields and the rain grenade mod uh, that unfortunately didn't make it into Borderlands 2 or the pre-sequel. As a manufacturer, they didn't make it into Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel. That sucks. But without further ado, these will be the top 7 best Atlas guns and weapons in Borderlands 1. Number 7, The Troll. So The Troll is sort of like and unlike the Avenger SMG from Borderlands 2. Uh, and what I mean by that is that it has a passive effect. Uh, instead of regenerating your SMG ammo pool like the Avenger does, the troll passively regenerates health over time. While this effect isn't extremely powerful or anything, it is useful for recovering between fights with various mob-like enemies. Uh, unlike Borderlands 2, where barrels determine the special effects of unique weapons, the troll's special effect comes from the Accessory 2 slot for weapons. This means you could have a different barrel on the gun, and you still get the same effects. Now, it is worth mentioning that the troll can only come in non-elemental varieties, and in my personal opinion, this does hurt its viability somewhat up against most armored enemies. Uh, even still, I think it's way better than the Atlas Hydra shotgun for use in normal combat. Um, it's sort of a shame that we didn't get a troll pistol in Borderlands 2 of the pre-sequel, especially since it would have fit the theme with Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep DLC for Borderlands 2. Uh, the passive healing effect could have come in handy when combined with certain character skills in Borderlands 2. Hopefully we get a lot more weapons like the troll in Borderlands 3. Number 6, Kiros Power. So Kiros Power was added with the General Knox DLC for Borderlands 1. For those of you that aren't familiar with Borderlands 2 in the pre-sequel, Kiros Power is somewhat similar to the Shari Ami Malawan sniper rifle that heals the user via transfusion orbs. Man, I really hope I got that pronunciation right. Unlike the Malawan Shari Ami, Kiro's power is an explosive sniper rifle, and from my experience so far, it's an explosive sniper rifle done properly. Uh, something I can't say of the Jacob's Cobra from Borderlands 2. As I mentioned previously with the troll pistol, Kiro's power's special effect is determined by a special accessory that fits in the accessory 2 slot for weapons. What I mean by that is that the barrel itself doesn't determine the special effect. So you could have a different barrel on this gun and still have that same effect because it's determined by an accessory. I sort of like the blue and white look of the sniper rifle, and it's sort of weird to say, but it reminds me slightly of what weapons from Borderlands 2 look like when they have their weapon skins removed. Um, I also like the explosive effect combined with the transfusion effects. Um, while I suppose I would have rather had instant healing, uh, like the Grog Nozzle or the Hail from Borderlands 2, I find it works out pretty well. It's also worth mentioning that the red text is quote unquote good touch, and could this red text have inspired Moxie's good touch SMG from Borderlands 2? I think it's a possibility. Number 5, Ajax Spear. There's nothing particularly special about the Ajax Spear combat rifle other than it has a lot of really good weapon parts on it 
and that it can drop from Ajax. Uh, the Ajax Spear is a weapon from the General Knox DLC. Like many weapons in Borderlands 2, the Ajax Spear's effects are determined by its barrel. Uh, the Ajax Spear barrel has improved damage and relatively low recoil. It's also worth mentioning that certain legendary accessories, like the Ogre accessory, can appear on the Ajax Spear, which ultimately creates an Ajax Ogre. Now, the Ajax Ogre is considered to be one of the best weapons from Borderlands 1. Um, as for the regular Ajax Spear, it's a pretty nice weapon. Uh, it seems to have great fire rate, damage, and accuracy. And it's weird to me that assault rifles like this didn't make their way into Borderlands 2, as this is a really fun gun to shoot people in the face with. Um, I could definitely see how this would become quite powerful when combined with other legendary weapon accessories, uh, as you're essentially improving something that's of high quality in the first place. Number four, the Cyclops. The best way for me to describe the Cyclops is that it's sort of similar to the Hyperion Fremington's Edge in Borderlands 2 or the pre-sequel. However, the Cyclops is essentially a vastly improved version of the Fremington's Edge. Now, the Cyclops has increased weapon zoom, making it perfect for long-range sniping. Uh, this effect comes from a unique weapon sight part, which means that it's compatible with different weapon barrels. I actually kind of find it difficult to use the Cyclops because because the zoom is so high, I mean, if you're up close to enemies, I mean, it's really difficult to get the reticle on their head and then fire. That said, at a distance, it's friggin' awesome. I do kind of wish that the damage on the Cyclops was just a teeny little bit higher as well. It's not bad by any means, but I wish you could literally wreck whatever you shoot with this thing. Even still, it's a great gun and it's definitely recommended. Number three, the Ogre. So I have a love-hate relationship with the Ogre from Borderlands 2. My biggest issue with it is that I feel like its damage is relatively low and the wind-up time is ridiculously long. It's a shame because the special two-fang ricochet effects are quite nice. However, Borderlands 1's Ogre is how you do the Ogre correctly. As soon as you pull the trigger, you figuratively unleash hell upon your enemies. And as I alluded to earlier, the Ogre gets its special effects from a special weapon accessory. This means that it can spawn with different weapon barrels, which can greatly alter its effects. While I won't be demoing it in this particular video, the Ogre accessory can spawn with the Ajax Spear Barrel to create the Ajax Ogre, which is one of the most powerful weapons in Borderlands 1. Like the Ogre from Borderlands 2, the Ogre in Borderlands 1 is an explosive-only weapon and is great up against virtually any opponent, whether they are armored or not. Um, between the two, the original Ogre from Borderlands 1 is a much better weapon as you actually feel powerful while using it. Uh, definitely pick one of these things up if you get the chance. Number two, the Ares Revolver. So the Ares Revolver is a powerful revolver that looks and is somewhat similar to the Kiro's Power Sniper Rifle. This is because the Ares Revolver has a transfusion effect and you kind of get that blue on white skin as well. Now, unlike the Kiro's power, it appears that this effect only applies when an enemy's shields are depleted, which is kind of a drag and holds it back in my opinion. Now, like I mentioned with the Ogre previously, the Ares gets its special effects from a unique weapon accessory. This means that you can feasibly have it spawn with a different barrel that will change its effects for the better or for the worse. Now, the Ares can only come in shock element, and since an enemy needs shields to deplete for the transfusion effect to work, uh, this might not be a reliable weapon to use for both high damage output and healing at the same time. Though I've got a pretty good feeling it would be amazing on Salvador the Gunzerker from Borderlands 2. Like the other official pearlescent weapons from Borderlands 1, the Ares was introduced with the General Knox DLC. Uh, Atlas only produced two pearlescent items, the Ares Revolver, and then the other is the Omega Shield. Uh, while I like the Ares Revolver, I think there's another revolver from Atlas that is a little bit better. Number one, 
the Chimera. So the Chimera is both one of the most fantastic and weird weapons I've encountered in a Borderlands game. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the Chimera is a pan-elemental weapon that changes its element as you shoot it. Uh, so one time you might get explosive rounds, then the next time you might either get like fire, shock, or corrosive rounds. Um, it's sort of interesting because you can look at the item card during use and it will display different elements occasionally. It's kind of weird. Like many other weapons from Borderlands 1, the Chimera's effects are based on a unique weapon accessory part, which means that you can have different barrels on the gun that either improve or downgrade its overall damage and abilities. I don't really know why, but I prefer the Chimera over the Ares. I feel like the Chimera just dishes out a lot more pain to enemies that I happen to be shooting. Corrosive in Borderlands 1 functions like slag from Borderlands 2, and provided you shoot an enemy enough, it'll get the corrosive status effect, leaving it vulnerable to even deal more damage. Guys, I like the Chimera. It's not only interesting in premise, but it's also quite powerful in practice. All right, that's gonna pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. Like I said earlier, this is a bit of an experiment. Uh, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, um, because that'll determine whether I make more. And as for the Q&A, I think we're still going to be doing that on either August 3rd or August 4th. So that'll be this Wednesday or Thursday. So leave a comment if you want to participate in that. Otherwise, take care and I'll see y'all next time.